Hi, I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. Welcome to Free Thought Matters, a production of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which I co founded. And I'm Dan Barker. We're executive directors of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which serves as the nation's largest association of free thinkers. That's atheists and agnostics. And we work to defend the constitutional principle of the separation between state and church. We invite you to join us. Visit today FFRF.org or ask for information and we'll send you a sample issue of our newspaper, Free Thought Today, and a brochure about FFRF's 40 plus years of achievements. And speaking of the separation of church and state, that's our theme today, particularly the harm of religion in our public schools. Our guest, Jessica Alquist, will talk about why she sued to remove an eight-foot-tall prayer banner from her Rhode Island high school and the shocking persecution that occurred. Jessica won this case in 2012 at the age of only 16, and it's a testament to the vital need to keep schools free from divisive religion. And it's so nice to see you again, Jessica, even remotely. Thank you for joining Hi, us. Hi, how are you? It's wow. been uh, way too long. Well, we first met it you. Has. I think we first met you in 2012, was it? Right after you had taken the case. And uh, you spoke at a number of our mm -hmm. conventions and events. And you were an atheist in high school complaining about a religious statement in your school. But you were raised Catholic, right? And in, in a very Catholic state. So you were, then you became a young atheist. What happened? How did that happen? Well, just to, just to clarify there, my parents were never traditionally religious in any real way. You know, they, they raised me to sort of ask whatever questions I wanted and things like that. So definitely the area that I was raised in, very, very Catholic. So for me to be bringing this type of thing um, in a public school, you know, but in such a religious community, um, it, it was as if I had done something criminal, um, the way that people reacted. So Jessica, could you uh, kind of lay the groundwork? What did you sue over? What was the problem at your school? As a freshman in my high school, um, I had seen this prayer banner, or it was more like a mural. It was painted directly onto the wall, it seemed. and. I recognized immediately that it was a prayer. I mean, it, it said school prayer at the top, and it began, Our Heavenly Father, grant us each day, and it ended with Amen. And I wasn't confident enough in my own knowledge of the Constitution and American history at that point to, to say, oh, I know for a fact that's illegal, um, because again, I was, I think, 14 when I first saw it. Um, but I, I left school that day and I was talking with my friend about it and then I mentioned it to my dad and I became fascinated over this idea that there was a prayer in my school because my instinct was telling me that it was a legal issue that, that had no place in a public school. So I started looking online and school actually let out for the summer. And I was doing a bunch of research on the internet, learning all about the First Amendment and other cases that had established precedents before. And so I eventually decided that I was going to bring the matter up to someone at my school once it resumed in the fall. Now, funny enough, another woman had actually made a complaint to the ACLU over the summer and I read a newspaper article about the complaint that she had written. So she, re she remained anonymous the entire time, but I decided to make a Facebook page. Uh, this was back when Facebook was a force for good primarily. <laughs> and I, I made this page because I wanted to show support. I wasn't sure who the woman was, but I wanted to just show that I was supporting what you know, the cause that she was um, bringing to everyone's attention. So I made a group, I think it was called something like support the removal of the Cranston West prayer banner, something along those lines. And nobody joined it for a long time because it wasn't a big issue yet. But quickly after the new school year started, they started to have these meetings 
to discuss whether or not the prayer was going to stay or be removed. And I got involved in those and um, I presented myself as a, an atheist to a room of people who had showed up to attend this meeting. And I didn't know quite what that was going to mean using that word to describe myself at that time in that place. And someone audibly gasped when I said that I was an atheist and I, I was called a witch, you know. Um, and this was the first encounter I, I had ever had with, with that type of um, backlash directly from people. And, and these were adults in my community who I was shocked that they would that they would be saying these things to me. So um, that it, it quickly snowballed. You know, that was just the, the first spark. And then because I had presented myself that way, um, the local news outlet wanted to talk to me. And it was on the news that night that I, I called myself an atheist. And one thing led to another. <laughs> I started going to all of these meetings and continued to point out that as a secular person, um, and, and I tried to emphasize that not only as a secular person, you know, because it is a First Amendment issue, theoretically a person could have faith and, and still want to bring this case. Um, it just so happened that I didn't believe in God, and, and that became really the attention of, of everyone. Yeah, uh, after probably five, five meetings, the ACLU sent me an email and said, hey, we've seen you on the news and we have been in touch with this other woman who initially brought the complaint, but she doesn't think she wants to sign on to a lawsuit. Um, we noticed that you've been speaking quite a bit and that you seem really passionate about this issue. And if you wanted to, if if the school refuses to take it down, um, we would we would represent you in court. And so after the last meeting where they voted to keep it up, that, that's what we did. Yeah. And so the suit, um, remind me, the suit was filed in 2011 or so? Yes. Yeah, and that's when we met you uh, shortly after that suit was filed and gave you the first of a couple of awards, student activist awards at that time. Um, and we're so impressed with your courage and Is that and one poise. of the awards back there behind you on the Yeah, mantle? that's one of them. You're just playing. This is from uh, from you guys, and this was specifically 2012 Free Thinker of the uh, Year. That's right, when you won your case. Wow. Well, we're getting ahead yeah. of ourselves. So uh, <laughs> it became a huge uh, uh, to do when you when the suit was filed. So tell us what what that meant for you. What what did that do to your life? How did people react? <sighs> well. Um, I was trying to just summarize briefly, but yeah, over over the course of what, a year and a half, roughly, um, things went from just being a little bit awkward and uncomfortable for me at school to me needing police escorts to my classes. So I was being, you know, followed around from class to class, um, and and that all, you know, escalated within about a year wow. between my sophomore and junior year of of high school. Uh, so it, it began where it was really just little comments from people. It was, oh, I saw you on the news. I heard that you said you were an atheist. You know, what's that all about? And other people had a different approach. They would say, how can you not believe in God? I never believe. I never thought in a million years that someone would actually not believe in God. I knew that atheists were a thing, but I didn't think that they lived in Rhode Island. And... Um, you know, so in the beginning, it was just a lot of confusion, and I was very shy, so it was difficult for me to have to deal with that. Um, but of course, it got it got far worse than that. Um, people started to become very upset, especially once I won my case, and they would tell me to leave the city. They would tell me that you know, because the majority of the people in the school think that the prayer is good, that we should keep it and I should be the one to leave or that I should just look away from it. Um, and, and I was consistently called intolerant, which is 
very ironic, I think. Um, but in the end, I think the worst of the worst came from actually winning the case and, yes. and the school having to take it down. Hmm. That was when um, you guys and, and some others tried to send me flowers to say congratulations. And that was a challenge evidently we were um, we were turned down it was uh, and we ended up taking this in the human rights division there in Rhode Island we couldn't find a florist to, to send you flowers and that was so shocking this uh -huh. lack of understanding of civil liberties and civil rights and it was also so unusual that when you won in the sense everything got worse for you hmm. and usually yeah. people love winners huh. and there was um, also social media uh, was the big issue because these early cases in the 60s where families were persecuted and children were persecuted for taking prayer cases, but you had to deal with social media and really awful threats uh, that escalated. And I think part of that was your state legislator who, uh, what did he do? Um, he is no longer, for the record, uh, in office, but he, he decided to go on to a conservative um, radio station and coined a little nickname for me. Um, he referred to me as an evil little thing, and that quickly huh. actually backfired on him and worked out well for me because we printed T-shirts and we <laughs> sort of rallied around that little nickname. We uh, have a little clip I, of you at the Reason Rally in 2012 talking about that. Just briefly, let's show that. You can't imagine the things that I've heard um, in school. I'll walk down a hallway and people will say, ew, it's the atheist. There have been people on the internet, obviously. There was a state representative, Peter Palumbo, who did call me an evil little thing. Like all those boos. At, I was at one of those people booing out yeah. there. <laughs> so the decision came down in early 2012, is my recollection, in federal court, a resounding victory, and then they took the prayer down, uh, the prayer sign down. And I think that uh, there's a fascinating interview with you on, on national TV, CNN, with Soledad O'Brien, and we want to show a little bit of that. Those prayers weren't actually working. Is, is that the right way to put it? And you felt like, well, then clearly there's nothing, there's nothing in this. Is that, is that appropriate not, to say? Not only the fact that my prayers weren't being answered, but because I was praying, um, you know, I was thinking more about it. I was thinking, do I really need God's assistance? I bet other people probably need it more than I do, more than my family does. So how come he isn't helping them either? And it just kind of brought all these questions to mind. And in the end, I decided he must not exist. We were just showing some pictures of uh, angry parents who were um, uh, you know, very loudly talking about the Pledge of Allegiance and saying the Pledge of Allegiance in this meeting that clearly became very uh, you know, full of anger. What do you make of the, the hostility that's come out around this? You've gotten death threats, is that correct? That's correct. And? Um, it's been really difficult, obviously, just to um, constantly have this feeling of hatred towards me in my community. Um, the meeting itself was difficult, but it, it's kind of what's been going on for a long time now. And, um, you know, I, I'm, I think I'm ready for it at this point. Um, but you never really get used to hearing about how bad you are, really. Um, it, it's, it always hurts. And the death threats obviously have always hurt my feelings. Um, I've just kind of gotten to a point where I can cope with it. It's not so much that I'm you know, okay with it happening, but I'm able to cope with it now. There's a congressperson, a uh, state rep, who, um, Peter Palumbo, and he said this about you. He said, you are an evil little thing, and you've had to have a police escort take you to school. Have you responded to yes. him? Um, I haven't responded to him directly, but the response so far to that comment has, it's almost a bit of a mockery. Um, I feel it's immature and inappropriate for a state representative, who represents me also, by the way, um, to be calling me something as petty as an evil little thing. And so while it does kind of hurt a bit, um, we've kind of turned it into a, a joke. I've heard about and that. I've got a friend who's, uh, yeah. who's now co-opted the phrase. I hope you've trademarked that evil little thing, right? And turned it into <laughs> t-shirts that he's selling so that you can help fund your college education. Is that right? 
That is right. Um, there's a website where people have been purchasing the t-shirts and um, I've seen lots of people um, at the meeting wore them and um, people take pictures of themselves wearing them and post them to Facebook so I can see and, and I think it's really cute and in a lot of ways I think his little comment has kind of backfired because now we're using it as a positive thing. You know, it's, it's almost a way of saying that people stand with me. Wow, Jessica, you were so poised as a 16-year-old yeah. on national TV. You were really an inspiration to a lot of young people and students and, um, and, and all of us, actually, for your bravery just to speak out and do what, what is right. We're going to take a break, and after the break, we want to ask you if you might have some advice for other young people who are dealing with similar situations in their life today. We'll, this is Free Thought Matters, and we'll be right back with more. Jessica Alquist. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason. My name is Jarvis, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. There are many reasons why I'm an atheist, but I'll start with the crudest explanation. I'm sure many of you have seen Clash of the Titans or The Immortals or 300, these blockbuster films about ancient Greek or Roman religion, which we now call mythology. But back then it wasn't mythology. It was very real for them. They genuinely believed that you had to put a coin in a person's mouth before they were buried so that they could pay for the literal ferry to the afterlife. Just as many people today believe that they should eat crackers and wine on a Sunday or that God wants women to hide their bodies under black burqas. Every religion that has ever existed, and there are many, have all believed that they were right, that their rituals and rules and beliefs were 100% correct. And they all thought they nailed it. But where are they today? Uh, if they're not completely forgotten, they're on the silver screen, amusing us with their sword fights, animal sacrifices, and oracles. The religions of today are the entertainment of tomorrow. Everyone, I hope, is an atheist about Zeus and Apollo, Juno and Poseidon, I just added Jesus and Muhammad to that list. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. You can find more content by the Freedom From Religion Foundation at our website, ffrf.org. Follow FFRF on Facebook and you'll get notifications about all of our content, including whenever we go live on FFRF's Ask an Atheist. FFRF is also on YouTube, where all of our programs, including this show and our weekly news bites, are available to watch anytime. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the web. Read That Matters is back. We're talking with Jessica Alquist, who was an, a plaintiff in a very significant challenge of religion in the schools, and uh, getting reacquainted with you, Jessica, and we just heard really a very shocking um, chronology of your case and how the momentum just continued against you even after you won in 2012. And uh, any reflections? It's been, what, um, about nine years on, uh, on how you were treated and why there's such ignorance about the importance of keeping religion out of the schools? I, in a way, think that these days it would actually be almost, I don't want to say easier, but I do think that those people who feel compelled to do something similar today absolutely should. I think that there are only more resources available now. There are only more, you know, uh, people in the FFRF and, and similar groups to offer support and there's there's more social media platforms, you know, where you can find like-minded individuals who will, you know, be the the counter to the hatred that you might experience in your own community. So I I've been asked by people, you know, was it actually worth it? Because 
it seems like it ruined a big portion of your high school experience. And yes, absolutely it did. It did ruin a big portion. I think I used to deny that it did. But um, in retrospect, I now can see myself a 15 year old version of myself as a child, which is not something I was able to do at that point. And I see the hatred that was hurled at me um, differently now. It's, it's even worse in a way because I'm removed from it and now I can see it for what it was, which was adults um, attacking a child. And um, I, I do think that in today's world, we may have a little less tolerance for that. Um, you know, a young woman being referred to as an evil little thing. And then um, later in that same interview, um, you know, I was referred to as a pawn star, P-A-W-N. And I, I think there are some things that, um, that would actually be more interesting in today's world. Um, that that this idea that um, you know kids are able to kind of have a voice in in all of this, I think that's only become more clear through like the Parkland activists and and other you know teen high school activists. And I, I just think that really since my case, I think there's it's only been positive developments. That well, well, Jessica, there, I mean, high I schoolers. High schoolers today are less religious now than they used to be 10 years ago. I think about a third or more of under 30s are not religious at all. So maybe it would be a little easier in that regards. Certainly could be. Yeah. I, I mean, I think too, we're, I think it, it may have been the Trump presidency in some ways that has, um, made everybody realize that things like the Constitution and the First Amendment, we should not be taking them for granted. I previously had people telling me, you you might be technically right, you know, but who really cares? Like, you know, why, why do all of this? It's just the Constitution. It's just the First Amendment. And I think with the coming in and going of Donald Trump, we've sort of understood that these things are living and breathing and they need defending in in everyday life. But also, what happened to you is the reason why we need to keep religion out of the schools. And this has happened Absolutely. not just to you, but to the earlier Supreme Court plaintiffs, you know, starting with the McCollum family in the 1940s, um, Ellery Shemp and his family in the 60s. We saw the backlash against the Weissman family. These are all families that sued over different uh, versions of religion in the schools. Well, you met some of those people. And you, you met, met yes. Ellery. And, and I know you met Ellery came in uh, with, with I Sarah Myron. I also met Debbie Weissman. Yeah. 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 Yes. And from, from Rhode Island. Right. And yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, it's just, it's just the perfect uh, reason why we need to keep religion out of the schools, that you could be targeted as an atheist who was speaking out against an illegal use of religion in the schools, or it had you been any religion. But typically, these are taken by, these cases are taken by non-believers or perhaps Jewish families. People are in the minority. So, um, yeah. well, we really uh, think it's terribly important that this case be remembered and be documented that this could happen at all in the United States, that uh, a young child could be targeted in this way, and that we couldn't even send you flowers hmm. to, to congratulate you for winning. Eventually, we a did. We found a florist in Connecticut, right? Who yes. drove all the way over yeah. to give you flowers. Yeah. <laughs> Glimpse of Gaia. I will never forget. Yeah. Um, they, they delivered me not only flowers from you at the FFRF, but I, I think because of the publicity around back to. There were so many florists who did not want to send flowers to me. Um, people all over the world were sending baskets of flowers. And at, at one point, I, there were so many that I just couldn't even move around in my bedroom anymore. There were just plants everywhere. <laughs> but it was such a nice, um, like I said, it's, it's the counterbalance to 
you know, constantly hearing how terrible you are. And then you, you get home and, oh, look at, I have all these flowers. I am loved. I am something good. Yeah. Well, you are. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you people told you that what's the big deal? But you, we could see from that audience at the school that a lot of people do think it's a big deal. They take it very seriously. So, so fighting against that is a very brave thing you did. I like to think that I would have done it knowing what was to come, that I, I would have still chosen to get into it, even though there would be a lot of backlash. Um, I guess I'll never know for sure. But I, I, I do think if I could do it all again, I, I definitely would. And in the meantime, uh, you are finishing up studies in political science, correct? Yep. And yep, how, just about finished. And how are you doing in the pandemic? It's been difficult, but my family's okay, and I've been okay, so I have nothing to be complaining about. Well, we are so grateful that you joined us uh, at Free Thought Matters, Jessica, to tell your very important story about why we really need to keep religion out of our public schools. And uh, thank you again. So lovely to see you. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in person again soon. Yes, I hope so. That would be great. And thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. I believe in an America where the separation of church and state is absolute, where no religious body seeks to impose its will, directly or indirectly, upon the general populace. Let's restore respect for America's secular roots. Help the Freedom From Religion Foundation defend the wall of separation between state and church. Join us at FFRF.org. Freedom depends on freethinkers.